Tennis string review time. Welcome to the very first episode of TK Tennis. And today we're going to be seeing if the hype is real, meaning the hype from all the tennis creators on YouTube, from Carew at My Tennis HQ, Time for Tennis, Beckett from Tencom, Harry from Tennis Spin, or the PH Tennis Crew. They are all promoting this new generation of strings from Restring and Toraline. And I wanted to see for myself, is the hype real? And are these really sort of a next generation of string compared to everything else from the RPM Blasts to the Hyper G? Uh, my personal favorite has been the Grapple Snake Tour M8, which is a round poly. I've also really liked the orange uh, Kirschbaum Super Smash. I've used Luxlon and many, many others. So I decided to string up my, my two MPs um, with wasabi in the mains and restring sink in the crosses and on the other MP frame super toro toro in the mains and restring sink again in the crosses and the reason is pretty simple it seems like toro line has really pushed this effort of having blended strings of two different polys so a blend called a blend versus a hybrid um, it seems to make more sense since you're blending two polys that you do your shaped poly in the mains and you do your round poly in the crosses. Uh, so I have that with both of these. Uh, obviously the wasabi is a four-sided string and the super toro toro is a six-sided string. And the reason being is that when you're hitting your forehand or backhands or any shot with spin, you're using your main strings that are getting the snap or the deflection and then snap back to impart the spin. So the shaped polys impart most of the spin and the round polys are in the crosses just so that the two slide by each other and the strings snap back into place. Uh, so that's my intro. We're gonna go hit the courts and I'll see you on the other side and let you know what I think about both of these high, uh, both of these blends and how they performed and are they actually that much different and how much different are they than the previous generation of polys if you believe that these are a new generation of polys. All right, up first is wasabi and sink. Next up, Super Toro Toro with Sync. Okay, so now that I have about six hours of hitting on these rackets, uh, about three hours each on these rackets, 
um, what are my takeaways from these strengths? Um, I think it's really interesting. First and foremost, these are much more similar than they are different. There's some slight differences between the Super Toro Toro in the mains and the Wasabi in the mains. Um, again, much more alike than they are different. So let's start off with what is different. The Wasabis are a little bit softer, a little bit plush, but they're not plush. I would say medium. They have a crisp, firm hit to them. Um, but the Super Toro Toros have a more crisp feeling. The other difference is the Wasabis being a four-sided uh, shaped poly. You can clearly tell with both of these rackets that there is more launch angle than you expect. Even my son, who hits very direct, immediately when he started hitting with these, you could see the launch angle change on the ball, and he was surprised. It was very noticeable and very distinct. The Wasabi places a little bit more spin. The Super Toro Toro is a little bit more direct, but they both impart more spin than you're used to, and I believe that's probably due to the snapback. So really interesting. What you'll also notice is uh, what, what's become clear is with these strings that you will notice a snapback. You've talked about a lot of snapback. You've heard a lot about snapback. I'm probably from the other YouTube creators. There is more snapback with these strings. It's, it's very clear. And that's mostly good, but it's a little bit bad as well, depending on the type of hitter you are. If you are an aggressive swinger or you have nice, clean acceleration through the ball, the snapback is only an advantage. But what happens sometimes is when the ball is pocketing, if you decelerate and you don't have nice acceleration through the entire ball path or the impact zone, you will get some premature, or what I think is premature snapback, where the impact of the ball bites the strings, forces them to move, but because you're decelerating, the snapback happens before the ball has been fully released from the string bed. And what happens there is if you decelerate, the ball and the snapback being premature launches the ball long, not into the net, definitely long. Um, that is very clear. So on your normal forehands and backhands, if you have a full swing, these strings are great and the snapback is beneficial. What I also think is that if you're not an advanced player, or at least a 4 out with full swings, these strings probably would probably won't do anything for you. The better player that you are, the more you're going to feel the differences on these strings. And that goes all the way up to the ATP level. I think the better player you are, the more strings these are going to have an impact on your game. So that's my takeaway on the strings. You, you heard a lot about snapback. I think that's true. Uh, and I would go so far to say, if the Luxalon Alu Powers of the world were version 1.0 of polyesters. I think it's clear to say that the next generation of polys, so the RPM Blast and the Yonex PolyTor Pro and, and all that generation, and even Grapple Snake Tour M8s and uh, Tour Snipers and others, all the other variations of polys, those are version 1.5. They all have a little bit different attributes. Some are softer, some last longer, some are shaped polys, some are not but they're not dramatically different. They're certainly in the same family as the original version 1.0 generations. I do think that the YouTube creators are being fair, honest, and accurate, that Restring Zero and Toro Line are onto something. I think the other manufacturers are going to have to adapt to this, to these new generation of strings. While well, these, uh, these companies have done an amazing job marketing themselves with using YouTube creators to market these strings, um, I think they've also done an incredible job in their manufacturing. The slickness of these strings and the snapback of these strings is noticeable. Um, is it wildly dramatic? No. But again, the better player that you are, the more impactful it is. So the question for me becomes, am I going to continue to use these strings? And I think the answer, six hours, three hours in each, is clearly yes. Most likely the Super Toro Toros with continue to use the sink and the crosses. Maybe I'll use a different round poly in the crosses. Um, but right now, after this review, the Super Toro Toro and the Sync has enough power, but not too much power, has the right amount of control, probably because of the restring sync. And the feel, most importantly, to any good uh, player that's been playing a long time, feel is the most important thing. These strings feel just a little bit better 
than the wasabis. But if you're a high spin player and you like to play with big top spin, I think the wasabi in the mains and another poly round in the crosses is the way to go. Um, so with that said, are these versions, are these strings version 2.0? I think so. I think they really are a half step above everything else, particularly if you're a decent player. I think you'll find these strings to be great, particularly on any stroke that requires spin. So forehand, topspin, backhand topspin, backhand slice, even an aggressive volley. If you're not hitting with spin and you're hitting flat, um, I'm not sure if these strings will have any benefit to you whatsoever. And I'd like to know if you're a flat hitter and you use these, do you notice anything different? So on a flat serve and an overhand, they feel amazing. They feel super crisp. But do they feel better? Do they do anything better with the ball? No, I don't think so. So on a flat shot, I don't think there's anything dramatic, any really advantages of these version 2.0s. <clears throat> I think it has to be a spin shot. So you're not going to see dramatic effects on volleys, overheads, flat serves, kick serves, yes, because you're imparting spin. In any shot where you need spin, that a little bit additional snapback provides that little bit of extra spin, which my wife and my son, who I hit with, they could notice that the ball felt a little bit more challenging to hit back. Again, it's not dramatic, but it doesn't need to be dramatic in tennis. If you can part a little bit more spin and that ball feels a little bit heavier or moves a little bit more, that means they're more likely to make an error. So what's surprising to me is that we don't see ATP players using this yet or WTA players using these strings. I think that's where they'll see even more benefits. Um, I think that's coming. I think the major manufacturers are going to have to adapt. And I think you're going to see some pro players playing with these, which I don't know of any that are right now, other than someone like Carew from My Tennis HQ, which I think he's ranked 600 in the world. Um, but he already knows that these strings have an advantage, the better you are. That's my takeaway. I hope that's uh, beneficial. I'd love to know your thoughts. So do the normal kit and caboodle, like, subscribe, comment, whatever everyone always says, I mean, this is my first video on this channel. If you'd like to see more reviews, maybe racket reviews, and you like the way I present this information, I'd be happy to do so. I have a CX Dunlop CX 200 coming and a 400 coming. I might test those rackets out. I love my Gravity MPs, um, but I'm always searching for what's better and what's next. And go play some tennis.